and I wear multiple hats. I have work in the for profit world and also non profit world. So, uh, a little bit about me I am a journalist from Nigeria who came to the US in 2005. I was practicing journalism for six years, working and covering the education bit. And I did love that bit because education is something that opens you up to new opportunities and new knowledge. No matter what you already know, you will always find something that you have not known before or you are learning about for the first time or even something that you know but you do not know deeper so it will help you to learn more in the process and upon coming to the u.s and now living in the u.s for over a decade i have done different things from running businesses for profit business non-profit business and i started first as a hair braider so Bukola braiding was my first business and Bukola braiding is still in existence but it is now also known as Bukola Oriola Group LLC because I do not just do hair stuff and currently I don't even braid hair anymore I only sell supplies and I do formulate <laughs> and sell hair and skin products and I also publish books books on different topics from memoirs I started with memoir from memoirs to self-help books and I've done book on hair and braiding like I have a book called simple steps to hair braiding it teaches you some of the basic styles that you can learn in hair braiding and i've done books on how to keep a soft hair for people of color people who look like me with i think it is 4c hair meaning your hair is very coarse and it's difficult to comb or you have a kid that the hair is so difficult to maintain those kinds of hair how to work with those kinds of hair in a way that is not hurtful to the person and of course i've done books on trafficking i've done books on self-help motivational one of my motivational series is i declare the i declare series the last series i just did came out this year actually last month july no not last month July was, so this is September, two months ago. It was released in July and it was a book that I started in 2017. So the last series is I Declare Hope that just came out. And then I also have books on how to start and run a website or blogging or social media. So I wear multiple hats i wear the hat of a publisher because i publish books and i also help others publish their books and also i wear the hat of an author because i have my own books that i have authored and another thing that a lot of people know me about is advocacy so i am into human trafficking advocacy and this was something that i got into as a result of my own experience as a survivor of labor trafficking in minnesota and i went on using my experience to offer solutions to the community to the government and i was first a consultant for the office for victims of crime I went on to be appointed by President Obama to serve on the 
U.S. Advisory Council on Human Trafficking, and then was reappointed to continue for another two years by President Trump. And now I am on the International Advisory Council on Human Trafficking with the European and um, Northern American governments. And then I consult, I consult for Department of State, the Office of Victims of Crime, and Minnesota State. So in Minnesota State, I currently consult for uh, DHS, Department of Human Services, and MDH, Minnesota Department of Health on anti-trafficking related issues and also how to work with survivors of trafficking as subject matter experts. So I wear, you know, those kinds of ads and in addition, I provide direct services through the Anyton Story. The Anyton Story is a nonprofit that I founded in 2013 to empower and advocate for victims and survivors of human trafficking and domestic violence. And I have been doing this work for uh, quite a while also also over a decade i have been doing the anti-trafficking work but my passion has always been in the media and has always remained in the media i run multiple websites i am always thinking i am a creative artist and i express express my creativity through writing through uh, speaking, through media production. So I have a YouTube channel, Bula Oriola YouTube channel. And also I express my artistic work through other means because there are other things I do with my hands that are not necessarily media related. So that is a little bit about me and then coming to the the subject of diverse books and why diverse books are important i believe that diverse books are important because it helps children especially children when you have kids as a mother i learned that children don't have to be born before you start communicating with them they also love to communicate with you and that is why even when a pregnant woman is sitting sometimes and when you can really see the stomach protruding you see sometimes the mother will say oh see the baby is moving the baby moving is a form of communication with the mom also while the baby is still in the womb we can be reading to the baby we can be talking to the baby i did that with my baby i was always talking to my baby and i could tell after it, it was born that some of those things that i will say to him or some things that has not even become part of our daily mantra were things i was doing when i was still pregnant so diverse books can be infused into our lifestyle and children's lifestyle while they are still in the womb and that is part of why it is very very important to start introducing children to diverse books diverse books also as children begin to learn from um, preschool even before preschool when whenever we're able to get any kind of material we should be getting materials that will help the kids learn not only about themselves materials that are produced by the 
owners of the stories especially you know it's one thing for somebody to write about let's say rondo in saint paul somebody from even another city completely i said somebody from minneapolis who has never lived in rondo is writing about rondo that story can only tell a portion or the perception of that person but not what somebody who is actually from rondo if somebody who was born and who lived in rondo were to write a book about rondo for children that person's writing we tell a more authentic story about rondo than someone who is a secondary source telling the story of rondo and that is part of the diversity that is very important when we are talking about diversity in in children's books and also it's really really good for kids to open books and see somebody who looks like them in the book it helps them to relate it helps them not to feel alone or feel lonely or feel like oh you know this is only the way the world looks like and in doing this it helps kids to learn about different cultures different abilities different beliefs different skin different um community other than their own community and the more we are introducing this to children they will be strengthening the fabric of our own community because it will form friendship it will bridge gaps gaps of you know races gaps of beliefs why don't we agree with somebody sometimes it is because we have no clue about them or because we have a completely different perception about them until we interact with them and one of those ways that we can interact with others and learn more about them is through literature literature like i mentioned before from those people in my culture they will say we want to hear it from the horse's mouth when you hear something like that it means we want to hear it from the primary source because we believe that the primary source is the most authentic source we can have of an information a secondary source is already diluted a secondary source may already taken something out or added something to create a scenario that they choose to create but when the primary source is giving you the information you get the information in the authentic raw state so these are some of the reasons why i believe that um diverse books are really really Im important for kids to learn about also i am passionate i'm very passionate about this work the work of publishing the work of literary heart and the reason for me is because you know i believe in creativity art is a creative thing to do because when you when you start writing even if it's doodling it helps it helps to bring the word out and i believe also that knowledge is power 
some people we say that knowledge alone is not power but the application of knowledge is power that is in my own opinion partially true knowledge alone can be power as much as applied knowledge can be power so knowledge alone for example it answers the question of information information in terms of oh you know i've heard about this place or have heard about these people or have heard about this tribe or this culture or this belief but this is what it really means other than what i know about it or i have never even heard about this before and this is the first time i am having i'm hearing about it or learning about it and that is uh what the the a uh, media mogul herself we say oh i had an i'm a haha moment because all of a sudden there is a light bulb that whoa okay so this is what this means so that is knowledge that you just acquired right there and it informed you and gave you an information that could be useful to you to your work to your community to whatever it is Another example is Africa. It's so interesting that coming to the United States, I started learning more about the U.S. and the U.S. culture and the people and the various cultures woven together in the fabric of the country called the United States. I call it the mini United Nations because almost every country of the world is represented in this one country. However, when you hear about uh, people, and I will go back to Africa, 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 I learned for the first time that some people think that Africa is a country. So if you had always thought that Africa is a country and all of a sudden you found somebody to educate you or you read in a book that Africa is actually a continent comprising of over 50 countries, that is a powerful tool in your hand because now that knowledge has given you power to know that africa is not a country but a continent now let's move to the application of knowledge application of knowledge is for example you want to start a business or let's come back to the topic of books. You want to become a published author. And you attended a workshop on how to become a published author. After learning all the steps you need to take to write your book, and taking the action to write the book by following that process you have learned about is the application of the knowledge that you have just gained. And that is also power. So either it's, you know, just knowing about something or applying what you have learned and that is one of the reasons why i am passionate because you know every day you keep learning new things about 
book writing, book publishing. You know, when I started publishing, independent publishing, that was not even the name given to it. It was called self-publish. And I remember even at that time, if your book was self-published, people look at you like you are not serious. Like, oh, who will read your book? Or, oh, that book is not validated. But now, and it's only been a couple of years, 2009 to 2021, a little over 10 years after, the environment has changed drastically. The terrain has changed. <laughs> New vessels are on the sea, sailing successfully as independent published authors to the point that, you know, they are taking over <laughs> from traditional publishers. They are competing effectively side by side with traditional publishers and that is the beauty i remember that one the the platform i used to publish my book for the first time it's called lulu and i still have books on lulu and i still use lulu for publishing and lulu keep expanding recently i was on their website and they already have um like a suite even for magazine for those of us who are interested in publishing magazines because i did my first magazine and i had to get isbn number for it but now with that suite it just helpful to turn out your own magazine looking like the regular magazine on the newsstand so you know the growth is unbelievable the expansion when there is a call for authors unbelievable amount of authors show up and majority of them when and when i say majority sometimes you get to a place and 99.99 percent .99 of them are independent published authors this is beauty to me and this is a a tool that we can continue to use to expand not only the literary world but also expand opportunities for diverse books for our children and even though we focus on children <laughs> adults also need diverse books how can we begin to tell stories of people stories of a particular culture in a positive way sometimes we focus so much on the negativity happening in a community that we bypass all the beauties and the glory that community has to offer this is one of the things that independent published authors are helping to discover and make possible and then how do we begin the writing process hmm. writing process from my own experience it's been you know different each time for me for the books i've written because now i have done about 11 books i think and writing process can be as simple as just capturing the images of what you want to write in your thoughts 
in your daily life, in your personal life, or conducting in-depth research on a subject before you start to write. You know, these are things that I have done personally as I have been writing books now since 2009 and getting books published. You need to define what it is you want to write about or one message you want to pass across. And also, it is not only about the message you want to pass across. It is also what do you want to learn? Because if you're writing a book, for example, let's say you're writing a memoir. When I did my first memoir, my goal was to write a book that tells my story and also tell it in an authentic way and also help people to know that this is real and that was why i put my name in the book and said this is my story using my real name to tell that really really hard story did two things for me one thing is that it lets people who knew me before my experience know that it is the same me and that was one of my goals. The other goal was to let those who are in my situation learn that they are not alone. And most importantly, there is help available. And that was really helpful because I saw that the book achieved those two goals. Those were my two primary goals. But guess what? Even after that, I found the book also fulfilling secondary goals. Goals that I didn't expect the book was going to fulfill. Um, one of those secondary goals was that those who are doing the, the work, those who are you know working on the law those who are um doing things in terms of policies or you know investigate the book was also giving them clues and how did i learn about this i learned it from feedback from those who have used the book for that purpose Another secondary goal was that professors were using the book and schools were using the book. And one time I stumbled upon an article on my book in EBSCO file when I was doing research <laughs> on something else. Even though it was something else, but it was slightly related to trafficking. And I, I stumbled over, upon that in EBSCO file at the library. So those are secondary goals that I didn't even think about. That the book was meeting. So you want to define these goals and then take that process from there. Once you know what your goal is, the children's book, if you are writing children's book, the children's book you want to write, what is the goal you want to achieve with that children's book? Do you want kids to learn something about themselves? There are books that just even tell kids about nature, the sun, the moon, 
The sun shines in the morning. The moon shines at night. Trees, flowers, sunflower, jasmine flower, all kinds of flowers. You know, there are books on that. There are even children's books on body parts, helping the kids to know, this is my arm. I have five fingers on one hand and five fingers on the other hand. And in total, I have 10 fingers. Sometimes those books are teaching two things. They're helping the kids to recognize parts of their body and at the same time teaching them mathematics or arithmetic or counting. So you want to think what you want the book to teach or what message you really want to pass across. And once you have um, thought about that, then you can begin. And one more thing I will like to um, note is that writing a book, there are some people that think, oh, be, be, before you can write and publish a successful book, it's going to take you years. That is completely untrue. Will some book take years? Yes, it can take years depending on the author or what you want to write. Or There are so many things that goes into it. The factor of time, how much time you have to dedicate to write the book, but also... There are people who can publish a book within three months. And I will always, always, always um, say, if you want to do the book quickly, at least give yourself three months. The reason is because the book is going to go beyond the initial stage of your thoughts and your messaging. There are other technical things that you have to think about and make sure that you you do before you publish because you can run into the challenge of oh okay now i upload my manuscript people are trying to get the book they cannot download or the manuscript is worked up or this and this is happening or they get confused or they get frustrated and you do not want that to happen. So I will say the, the quick run, you want to give it at three months. That will be the quick turnover. So moving on, what are the elements in a children's book? In a children's book, I said before about messaging, that is your story. What story do you want to tell to the kids? Are you trying to tell a story that teaches morality? Are you trying to, to tell a story that teaches kindness? Are you trying to tell a story that teaches compassion? Are you trying to tell a story that gives children a general knowledge of who they are? So think about what your message is going to be about in that story. Then you want to think about the language that you're going to use when writing for children. That is not the time you want to go and dig into your professor's book of vocabulary and be using vocabularies that the kids don't even know what it means. Also, you want to speak in the language. You want to talk to them in the way that they can understand. And one of the things you can do to know what language kids we understand is go to the library 
and pick up kids' books. What is the determine the age range? What is the age range you are trying to write for? Go to the library, pick up books for that age range, and see the tone at which the authors are telling the stories. There are some books, you know, like I mentioned before, the sun shines in the day, the moon shines at night. Those are like rhymes. Do you want to write a rhyming book or you want to write a prose? And when you're writing a prose, you also still have to make it age appropriate. So that the children can understand what it is you are talking about. Another is your structure. If you are using rhyme, you want it to really rhyme. <laughs> Rhymey book, you know, Dr. Seuss did a perfect job with, you know, Rhymey book. And I now happen to have a child named Sam. Sam, I am, you know, green eggs and ham. So, read those kinds of book. It will give you your own idea, even though yours might be something else. Whether you want to do something about even, let's say, a, a food or food types that you want to teach kids about. Or we have kids who are picky about food and you want to let them like food. So, you write a book on food that they can eat and put rhyme to it and let it flow also case books do not have to be super long and the words do not have to be a lot 100 words in the whole book is fine even there are some that are not up to 100 words 50 words depending on the age group and then illustration if you are writing for little kids elementary you know let's say k through even before k pre-k to k 12 you want to put pictures especially those pre-kids kindergarten first grade i think it's in third grade they start pushing them a little further to read uh, more books with not just um few words but with more words to kind of train them to start thinking more critically because by fourth grade they are already teaching them research i know that because i had a kid who passed through those stages in fact it was in third grade they taught them marketing too i was surprised that they are teaching marketing in third grade. And I still have one of the marketing posters my son made. I was shocked when he did over. He said, Bogo, buy one, get one off. I'm like, how did you know about buy one, get one off? And his scooter can, can fly or can transform. And he said, that's why a scooter stands out and they should buy it and it did i was fascinated i saved that artwork and had to laminate it so you see at that age third grade fourth grade they're already doing more but before that age the illustration so you have to have pictures pictures that is kid appropriate for whatever it is you want to write and that's why it will be good for you to get an illustrator i we get to that in a moment so the next one is team what is the team about do you want to set a team for you know household or you want to how do you want to set your team what plot do you want to use to tell the story so that it stays consistent it doesn't seem off. If you are writing something about 
nature the things you should be showing should be showing outside should be showing even when um part of the story is inside while the the picture can show inside it should still show something that is as maybe there is a window and you are talking about oh now the the sun is out or the moon is out it's night time going to bed but you're still talking about something outside oh is the rain the rain is falling it's cold let's say you want to just educate kid about rain where do rain come from you know it's interesting and kids can be curious that okay wait you know sometimes we see this thing falling from the sky and it makes it's water it's called rain why is it called rain where is it from what can we do in the rain when i was younger we played in the rain oh my goodness when it's raining i remember in elementary school <laughs> i was always excited because we go out in the rain and play and we even have song for rain too sometimes when we are in school and it's raining we sing rain rain go away come again another day little johnny i don't know how they came about little johnny wants to play because when it's raining and you are in school you can't even go out to play so we we sang that song so is you know think about all of those how you want to pull this together for your little ones to enjoy and then your target audience your target audience your, you have primary target audience and you do have secondary target audience for children's book your target audience are the children so from the cover to the inside of the pages it needs to appeal to the children the age range that you want to reach and your secondary audience are the parents the libraries the schools the even sometimes clinics doctors offices there was a day i was at a um like a little pop shop in saint paul and a lady bought one of my son's books for her son-in-law who had just opened a dental practice so she said oh you know the kids when they bring kids in for you know dental appointment the kids can be reading through the books or playing with the books so that's a primary that's a secondary audience who will be buying the book to get it to reach the primary audience for you so that is that and then tips on how to develop you know your character and researching june things like i mentioned before message is one of the most important thing before you even think about developing your character you need to think and be clear about what message you want to pass across so your message is what will now inform the character you're going to choose to pass that message across you know when it comes to book writing we don't do auditions <laughs> unlike film or documentary where the person writes the story and then they get different people to try to play the role to see whether they fit and do know that even when you start when you identify a character sometimes you will identify a character from somebody you know or somebody you don't really know but you have encountered one way or the other and you also have to know that sometimes your character you may start with one character and it may change because as you begin to think more and write more about this 
particular character it can just transform to a completely different character so use your creativity to develop you can to make easy if you are brand new one of the easy routes to go is to use characters that you are familiar with and then develop the story with that character and when you want to write let's say about june 8th or june 10th one of the things you can do too is to go to the library and borrow books or you can even buy books but you don't really have to buy books if you want to buy a particular book or you want to you want a specific book to read go to the library do you know they do interlibrary loan if your primary library does not have the book they can borrow it for you sometimes it has happened to me several times that i go to the library looking for a specific book and when they don't have it they can search to see who has it and in fact they borrowed books for me from outside of the state before through the library it's just that when they do interlibrary loan like that you are not able to renew so they tell you you cannot renew the book meaning that you're going to have it for the first three weeks after that is done you have to bring it back because they need to send it back to the library they loaned it from but if it's a book they, they have in your primary library, they will let you renew. And even renewing has limitations. You, I don't know how, how many times you can renew. Or even sometimes, if you are reading a book and you want to renew, you might not be able to renew because somebody else have, has come to the library to request for the, for the same book. So, you know, there is that. But use your library. Trust me, you will learn more than you expect when you go to the library and read. And now we have, I call Uncle Google. Use Uncle Google. Uncle Google is your friend. Sometimes I'm laying down in bed at night, an idea will pop in my head. And I will just Google. Perhaps an idea for a book or something, but I just Google. And it has really, really 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 helped me so use these resources online resources and um in-person resources at the library they are very very useful and when it comes to publishing what do publishers expect if you are going through a traditional publisher you know there are it depends from publisher to publisher there are publishers who do just children's books there are publishers who do just fiction so for example if you want to do a children's book and you are looking for publisher but you keep going to those who do only adult romance they're not going to listen to you. they're not going to answer you because you are going to the wrong publisher they don't want to publish your book that's not the kind of books they publish so every publisher is unique and different so how do you know what a publisher wants? you go on their website a lot of them have websites and in this age of course they have website those who didn't even have website before corona have website now trust me <laughs> those who don't do online sales and purchasing they do now with covid so go online and research and contact different publishers to let them know i remember when i first did my book i reached out to a publisher and they they responded back to me i didn't even know they would respond they did and said oh they've reached their limit for publishing that year and they can't take any more new publication and trust me i was glad they didn't because that was how i turned with the help of a professor from saint olaf professor joseph mbele i became an independent publisher 
which I am really, really happy about, especially with my background in print journalism. So I will say that also drawing upon my own experience, publishers want to think. <laughs> More M, I call it um two M's. Two M's is message and money, period. A publisher who will carry your kind of books or your kind of messaging, they want to see what message you are passing across. Does it align with their mission? If it aligns with their mission, does it tell the story in a way that they think the story should be told because believe me when you are going through a traditional publisher don't think the way your manuscript gets to them if they accept it is the way it's going to come out no they're going to take things off and they're going to put things in so be prepared for that and then the ultimate money is it going to make them money because they have to pay their staff they have to pay for overhead and all of that and they are not doing charity in fact we have charities making money millions now in form of for profit so they want to see is it going to make them money before they say yes to you and when it comes to editing and finalizing your manuscript so tips on how to edit you you have your manuscripts ready you've written everything you want to write and you want to edit so what i had mentioned earlier that i was going to get into is using freelancers there are so many professional and top-notch freelancers available online in various platforms from upwork to elans to fiverr fiverr is the most popular one right now among them so go to fiverr and find someone that can help you edit your book and pay excuse me there is price price ranging from five dollars and up and trust me it's hard to say that oh if the price is cheap it means the work is cheap no or if the price is more it means you're going to get up to that's also no <laughs> I have been using freelancers for a long, long, like many years before it became a pop, before Fiverr came, I started with Elans. So Elans is like, I don't even know, the grandfather of them all. Before there was anything like Fiverr. You can pay somebody and then they give you nonsense. So it's not about how much. The way you have to gauge who to engage with is read the reviews, read their reviews, pay, pay attention to read their reviews, and also, especially when it comes to editing, don't send your whole manuscript at once. Give them sample editing. I learned this from another publisher. Give them sample editing to do and see if the person who did the sample editing, if you are happy with their work, then you can give them more. And you can even be giving it to them in piecemeal. Or if you have access to the phone, hire maybe two or three people to edit for you. And aside from editing, I have seen books that Looking at the cover, I'm not even going to pick up that book. 
And trust me, this happens both to independent published authors and traditional publishers. The book cover. Take your time to find someone to make a book cover for you. If designing is not your thing and you do not have eyes for design, please hire somebody. You can also hire a book cover designer on Fiverr so that your book, when placed on the shelf at the library or on a book stand, it can compete side by side with other books and you have to also think about you know while you are finalizing you better be thinking about marketing marketing starts before the book hits the shelf because you have to tell people about the book you have to create anticipation so people can start getting ready and you can even start selling before the book is out trust me you can it can happen both online and offline and this is an example uh, some of my books before i do uh before it releases i will start kindle pre-order and then also when i published my son's book i also started not only kindle pre-order but i also started uh person in person pre-order that was before covid where you we were going to book events and different um, festivals and where were the festival i had a sample copy that was on the stand and when people came they were interested in the book they want to buy it, and i said yes you can pre-order it so you pay now for it and at that time to encourage people to pay i told them don't worry about shipping we will pay the shipping cost so pay now for the book when it's ready it's going to release on x y date once it releases after that you will get your own book in the mail within a couple of days or weeks so just give us your address and do you know people bought the books the book that they can't even take it with them right there but they bought so you have to think about that also you have to think about creating a career with your published work what got you into publishing what is is it that you are really interested in doing so for example my son's book was about his artwork one of the things we did was that we put some of those artwork into postcards to sell also it began to get speaking engagements paid speaking engagements where it will take some of those artwork the real artwork to the speaking engagement for display so people can see the artwork that he made and then see it in the book it was a really really nice and authentic experience for both the author and the readers so what is it you are writing about if it's something about art you can bring those with you you can even sell more of your art and when you do a book think creatively about other things you can do from that book what else can you create from that book that can be useful to people and generate your income so you have to keep thinking and thinking more about things like this and 
you know, you have to educate yourself. You educate however you know how to learn. Learn. Either it's through movies, through other books, through documentaries. Learn. Go to workshops. Go to conferences. In fact, now we have YouTube University and TikTok University. Go on there. You will be surprised about what you are going to be learning from various online platforms to keep giving you ideas, ideas of what you can do. Some people will um, make bookmarks for their book and give it for free. But some people will actually make bookmark and sell. It's something I have done. Made nice bookmark and sold it. Bookmark of the book. Who says you cannot sell it? You can sell it. They're selling bookmark at Barnes and Noble. So why can't you make bookmarks of your own book and sell? So those are some ways some people make t-shirts and they sell. And you know, continue to engage with your book and carry your book to different places to events to occasions where is it you are going make sure that you have copies of your books with you because sometimes you never know when you're gonna sell or somebody will be like oh you're an author i would like a copy of your book or i would like some copies you know i i carry my book and i do carry my books for giveaway sometimes for people and i have seen situations whereby i carry my book to give away for free and somebody will say oh i want more copies of that it still happened to me recently where i was meeting somebody for the first time and i wanted to give her a copy of my new book i declare hope and she said oh do you have more copies with you in the car i would like to buy for my co-workers and she bought three and then another person joined us and the person said, oh, I would like a copy for myself too. And she bought one. And at a meeting, I was expecting to just give one free book away. I ended up selling four books. So carry your books with you and don't feel uncomfortable or feel um, like you are over promoting yourself. You always talk about your book. Talk about it. Let people complain. When people are complaining, that's when you know you are doing a good job. Trust me. People will complain. Don't worry about the complaint. Keep promoting your book. Keep using word of mouth. Keep bugging your friends and your families. Whoever you know, whoever you don't know, talk about your book. And continue to be persistent. I believe that success does not come from comfort, but from persistence that is sustained by resilience. So keep pushing. And how do you build connections with other authors? You know, personally, I do it through support. I support other authors. I support a lot of authors within and outside Minnesota. I am always promoting other people's book. The thing is, while you are promoting other people, you are indirectly also promoting yourself. So it's a win-win. I promote other people who I engage with other authors. And of course, I continue to build connection through social media. I have YouTube channel. I have the L magazine. There are people still reaching out to be featured in L magazine. So that is one way that I continue to connect with diverse authors. And you know, in connecting with illustrators illustrators there are some illustrators i connect with through book events or i connect with them through the online through the platform like fiverr and the rest of them and you know what are the organizations to connect with for opportunities for growth and development there is the um independent authors business group they, they are called the alliance of independent authors that is a place that you can is a paid platform 
So you have to pay to be a member and they do have conferences and all kinds of educative stuff for their members. Also, if you are not a member, you can subscribe to their newsletter and they will still be sending you tips and information. Another is the independent book publishing organization. They also have paid membership. And in fact, I found out that they, they are voting members. Guess what? They are voting members also include independent published authors. So independent published authors are making waves. They are a force to be reckoned with. And of course, please have a blog. Have a website where you can use to be talking to folks. Have newsletter that you can use to be reaching your audience. And engage on social media. Thank you.